Forex has changed my life and the lives of many from grass to grace and you might be the next because in this video course, I'm going to take you from a complete beginner to a profitable trader while also exposing secrets only the top 1% of traders do. So I want to teach you from scratch everything you need to know about Forex trading. I want to simplify my many years of trading experience, countless hours of research I did for this course into a step-by-step -step process that will take you from a beginner or even a not so profitable intermediate trader into the advanced level. I wish I had seen a video like this when I was starting out because it would have saved me years. The top 1% of traders lock the advice given in this video inside their paid courses and mentorship. But I know you need money. I mean, that's why you are watching this video in the first place. This is why I'm giving you this beginner to billionaire video course normally priced at $997 for free. Whether you are beginning your forex trading career or someone who has already been trading, this video course will give you a solid foundation on the basics of forex. I am the luxury trader. Welcome to Luxury Box Trading Academy, the home for elite traders. Forex trading aka foreign exchange trading is a way to make serious money. Forex trading holds the key to financial freedom because it offers potentials for unlimited earnings, far beyond the constraints of a fixed salary in a 9 to 5 job. With my guidance and my secret trading soap strategy that I will reveal to you at the end of this course, you will be able to start your journey to financial freedom, whether you are still in the university or even working a full-time job. Furthermore, Forex also gives you location freedom. Unlike traditional office jobs that often tie individuals to a specific location and even tell them what to wear, Forex can be done from anywhere with an internet connection. This allows you to trade from the comfort of your home or while traveling, offering location freedom. But that's not all. Forex also gives time freedom. The Forex market runs around the clock, allowing you to choose when you want to trade. This flexibility contrasts the rigid schedules of a 9 to 5 job. You can only spend 30 minutes a day looking at the charts and make as much as doctors make in a month. Guess the most interesting part, you can start with as little as 10 to 100 dollars. Now if you don't have that, you can use your demo account which I will show you how to open in this video to perfect your trading skills. What exactly is the forex market? How can you trade it? And what are some of the basics that a beginner might need when starting out in the world of currency trading? Well, forex has a lot of names. Sometimes you hear the foreign exchange market, sometimes you hear the currency market, or sometimes you just hear FX. In all the financial markets, the forex market is perhaps the least understood, yet it impacts every day of our life. Whatever we buy or sell, no matter how small or incidental, has been influenced by the forex market. Let's just imagine you recently married the love of your life. Yes, that one you have been crushing on and you are in Nigeria but you want to go and spend your honeymoon in the United States. I know you are broke and currently very single but just imagine Sha. Before the trip, you might want to change some of your own currency to that of the destination country. In Nigeria, traveling to America will have to change the Naira for dollars. This is the basic principle of the foreign exchange markets. The small electronic bonds seen at international airports and banks are visual reminders of how currency exchange affects us all. Traveling overseas, importing goods or purchasing imported products are affected by the foreign exchange rates between countries around the world. It represents the market in which a country's currency is quoted against that of another. It therefore provides the basics for governments, companies, and private individuals to agree on a rate of exchange between one currency and another. Without these rates, there would be no agreed standard by which rates for transactions would be set. As a result, all rates are quoted in pairs with one country quoted against another. For example, the euro versus the US dollar. If the trader believes, based on the findings of his analysis, that the exchange rates between the euro and the US dollar will appreciate, he can buy the corresponding currencies today and sell them at a higher price later to make profit. And if the trader assumes that the prices will go down, he can take this into account in his trading plan and enter a so-called sell trade with which he profits when prices of the underlying assets depreciate. Let me use an example to explain this further. When Jonathan was in power as the president of Nigeria, dollar was at a time around 200 naira. When Tinubu entered power, we could recall that at some time dollar was shot up to 1000 naira per one. Assuming you knew in 2012 beforehand that dollar would appreciate against naira like this, 
and you had 2 million lying around in your bank account, you knew from your experience as a forex trader that uncertainty in government weakens a currency pair and you used this your 2 million naira and bought dollars and kept in 2012. It would give you about $10,000 with the rate of 200 per dollar. Then in 2024, when dollar escalated to 1,000 naira per dollar, you went to the bank, cashed out your $10,000 and exchanged it back to naira. The bank would give you 10 million naira now based on the new exchange rates. Remember, you only initially stocked 2 million naira. That means you made 8 million naira in profit. Let's forget about inflation and other stuff for now. Did you use that 2 million naira to do any business? The answer is no. What just happened was Forex. You initiate on the fluctuations of the price of dollar to naira and make yourself money without doing anything. You just sat at home while the foreign exchange markets did the job for you. This is essentially what we do in forex markets, just that you don't have to wait years or months to make money. You can make money daily because volatility, that is movement and fluctuations, happens daily. That's why banks never want you to learn about forex. They prefer you to come to their banks and deposit the money for peanut interest rates. When you are trading in the currency market, you can either be buying or selling. Essentially, you buy when you think the market will go up and if you are selling, the idea is that you expect the market to go down from the current price or wherever you enter. Naturally, there is always the risk that the price trend will not be as per the trader's expectation and hence, he or she has to close the trade with a loss. The forex market is essentially where traders, investors or businesses can trade or speculate exchange currency for one another. In big English, the foreign exchange market is a global decentralized or over-the-counter market for the trading of currencies. The market determines foreign exchange rates for every currency. It includes all aspects of buying, selling and exchanging currencies at the current or determined prices. Forex market has been in existence for over a century and is going to be until the whole world is not in existence. Banks, financial institutions, pension companies, ETC, trade clients money in the forex market, it can never crash or liquidate. We will still see man no more interesting things about the market but for now let's move on. I know you might be thinking, why do currencies change in value? Well there are many reasons as to why currencies may go up or go down but some of the main reasons are for example, news, economics of a particular country, there is different bank and institution that are moving price around as well as interest rates and all sorts of other factors including technical analysis which is essentially the idea that you can trade based on significant levels and the price of the charts to make profits. A lot of times when all these traders are putting in their different reasons for buying or selling, it causes the market to move and sometimes we see a trend up or trend down. Currency trading for retail traders like you and me is a new concept. Forex trading is now more readily available to retail or small people like you and me that doesn't have a lot of money. 10 to 15 years ago, unless you had millions of dollars, it's been very hard to get involved as a smaller investor. But now with the invention of leverage and possibilities through using a broker, we can access the foreign exchange market which I'll explain to you how to do and cash out big time. The foreign exchange market is one of the largest financial markets in the world with a trading volume of $7 trillion traded daily. That's $292 billion every hour, $4.9 billion every minute and $81 million every second. The biggest traders in the currency exchange markets are the governments and big banks. Nevertheless, with all this huge amount of money flowing in this market, wouldn't it be great for some of it to land in your pocket? Great, isn't it? Earning just a tiny percentage of this cake equals big cash but requires top-notch technical analysis, risk management, trader psychology and market psychology. Luckily for you, if you watch this video till the very end, you'll be learning all this that cost me thousands of dollars to learn for free. A currency pair is what you are seeing now. The forex market is slightly different than trading stocks. If I'm buying Apple shares, I'm just buying Apple shares. I'm not buying it against anything else. But when you are trading currency, the only way to make money is trading one against the other. I can't trade the euro against the euro and expect the profit because there is no change in currency there. But when I trade, I'm trading one currency against another and I'm expecting one to rise or fall in value to the other and that's how I make profits. How this works, well there's one way to look at it, you have a base currency and you have another currency which is called the foot or sometimes called the counter currency. 
Every currency for every country has a three-letter ISO code, and that's the term for ISO 4217. For example, the real dollar is going to be known as EUR. That's its three-letter code. The US dollar is USD, the Japanese yen is JPY, Australian dollar is AUD. Every currency has its own three-letter code, and so when you are trading against each other, you are trading forex pairs. You are going to see something like this, EUR USD. That's Euro versus US dollar. This is the language and structure of how we talk about currency pairs. When we talk about pairs, there are some general terms that you are going to see a lot. You are going to hear about majors, you are going to hear about minors, and you can hear about exotics. So I'm going to explain to you what these terms mean when we talk about forex pairs. Major pairs are generally any of the G10 countries containing the US dollar. For example, your dollar is considered a major because it's one of the G10 countries and it has the US dollar in it. For example, you have the JBP or the Great British Pounds to the US dollar. USD JPY, for example, is the dollar yen. USD CHF is the Swiss franc. Dollar Swiss USD card, which is a commodity currency. These are the majors. When somebody talks about a major, they are talking about the G10 countries and the dollar in there. This can be either the counter currency or it can be the base currency. When we talk about minor pairs, these are currency pairs that are not containing the US dollar. Let's give some examples. These are G10 countries but they don't have a US dollar in their currency pair. Euro to Swiss franc, Euro to the Great British Pound, Euro to the Japanese Yen, Pound to the Swiss franc, Pound to Yen, Pound to the Australian dollar and so forth. Those are considered minor pairs. Before I go into exotics, the reasons why they call this major and minor is because the major currencies are the ones that have the greatest transactional flow to them. They are part of the G10 countries. There's a lot more flow going through G10 countries than smaller non-G10 countries. Minor pairs are going to have less transactional flow going through them, but they still have a lot of liquidity. That is really the explanation between major and minor pairs. Exotic pairs can also include Euro or US dollar versus the Hong Kong dollar, US dollar versus the Singapore dollar or the Swedish corona or the Mexican peso or the Danish corona. Exotic pairs are one major with an emerging market currency. The one thing you need to understand about exotic pairs is that they are going to be less frequently traded and therefore less liquid. That means the spreads will be larger. You will notice that the spread between the dollar and the Mexican peso is way larger than it is on the euro versus the US dollar. Because they are traded less and because there are less transactional flows going through them, they are going to have wider spread and they are going to have less liquidity and they can often have a lot of volatility. It's important to understand the difference between majors, minors and exotics. With that being the case, we have one currency's value against another currency which is what gives us a better interpretation of a value of a specific currency. Let me open a demo account in my MetaTrader 4 to explain. Don't worry, I'll show you how to do that soon. By the way, two essential applications needed by traders are MetaTrader 4 or 5 and TradingView. Go to Play Store or App Store to download both of them either for your Android, iPhone or PC. There will also be links in the description to download the two of them. In the case of the Euro Dollar, this is the currency pair that we can trade. It is the most popular currency pair in the forex markets. These two currencies are called the base currency and the quote currency. Don't let this sound too confusing. There's nothing confusing about a currency pair. The first currency euro within the pair is called the base currency. Why the second currency US dollar within the pair is called the quote currency. Let us note this down, very important. If you have not been taking notes, start now. The base is the currency that appear first. Why the quote is the one that is added at the back. An important thing to understand is that the base currency is always stronger than the foot currency, unless in some pairs which I'll still talk about. Also, beside each of those, you see some set of numbers written by the side. Just focus on the first number for now. In the Euro USD, it is showing you Euro USD equals 1.0506. That number is telling you how many units of the foot currency you would need to get one unit of the base currency. What that means is that every base pair or first pair in a currency pair always has a equal value to one. You are always exchanging one of the first pair for whatever the quote pair is. What this means in hindsight is if I have one euro, I essentially have 1.05076 dollars. Or another way to look at it is it takes 1.05076 dollars to make one euro. Therefore, the value of euro is higher than the value of the dollar. 
Let me use a local scenario to give you an example. You have a currency pair between USD and Nigerian Naira. USD NGN equals 900. This is telling you that USD is stronger than Naira. Hence, USD is the base and Naira is the foot. The next important thing it is telling you is how many foot currencies do you need to get one unit of the base currency. In this case, you need 900 Naira to be able to get one US dollar. So that is what that number by the side always tells you. How many foot currencies you need to get one unit of base currency. I believe this is clear. So let's get back to the normal currency pair. So in this case, we need 1.05076 US dollar, which is the foot currency, to get one of Euro, which is the base currency. Okay, let's take a look at one more example. This is GBP USD. The first number beside it is 1.21433 and it's currently telling you that you would need 1.21433 of US dollar to be able to obtain one great British pound. Let's look at USD JPY also. It's currently telling you that you will need 149.526 of Japanese yen to be able to obtain one US dollar. Like I told you guys, the base is always stronger than the foot. There are a few occasions in which the stronger ones are written as the second pair and not the first. Examples include AUD USD, US dollar is stronger than Australian dollars. NZD USD, US dollar is stronger than the New Zealand dollars. EURJBP, pounds is stronger than Euro. However, apart from those few exceptions, generally, in Forex, the base is always stronger than the foot. Now, when you see these few exceptions, don't bother too much about why the weaker one is written first, even though it's quite glaring that the foot is stronger. What you just have to do is take note of them. It doesn't affect your trade, it's just for knowledge sakes, so you can note them down. Also, no matter which one is written first, you can know that the price you see beside it is how many of the foot currency you will need to get one unit of the base currency. There are various trading times and sections in Forex. They include Sydney section, Tokyo section, Frankfurt section, London section, New York section. The section names are derived from the major cities in which most of the transactions are done. Sydney sections represent Australia and other countries around the time zone. Tokyo section, sometimes called Asian section, represents Japan and some of the Asian countries. Frankfurt section, which is in Germany, represents Europe. London section represents the United Kingdom and the countries within it, while New York section represents the Americas. Let's now get to their trading sections. Each of these sections have their opening and closing times. Sydney sections opens at 10 p.m. GMT. Tokyo sections opens at 12 a.m. GMT. Frankfurt section opens at 7 a.m. GMT. London sections opens at 8 a.m. GMT. New York sections opens at 1 p.m. GMT. Note these trading times and sections in your exercise book as you will be needing them for your trading. Now, there's an important thing to note about trading. This is what many forex traders don't actually understand. It is advantageous to trade the market when two sections are simultaneously running. That is, when two sections are open at the same time. This is because the market is more volatile when two or more sections are open. The higher volatility implies more money in circulation. Trading a quiet market is not advisable because there won't be much fluctuation. These movements are what if waits to money for us as traders. You would come to understand this soon. By 12 a.m. GMT, Sydney section and Tokyo section would be open together and it would have more volatility than someone that is trading at 10 p.m. GMT because the market would be quiet. Both markets would be running together from 12 a.m. Another example is by 8 a.m. GMT. London and Frankfurt section would be open. In fact, even Tokyo section would be with them briefly. So, you would notice that volatility would increase during such times. As a forex trader, always time your trading to fall in such periods when two or more sections are open at the same time. By doing that, you would always have an edge in the forex market. The forex market is a 24 hour market, it doesn't open on weekends. Though it is most times regarded as a market that never sleeps, regardless of your country or time zone. A demo account is extremely vital to any new trader's experience in the forex market. It is a great way for traders to practice what they have learned and to apply what they have learned to the charts. If you mess up, there is no harm done because it's not real. It is real practice without real money. There is no real money on the line. Most brokers will allow you to trade on a free demo account. 
and the domain account will allow you to practice and perfect your skills until you are ready to apply them with a real account. Don't worry, we will soon discuss what brokers and recommend the one you should start with. For now, we'll focus on using the default demo accounts on MetaTrader 4 called MetaQuotes Demo. MT4 and MT5 have their own demo accounts and we'll be using it for now until you switch to your choosing broker's demo account. Don't worry, I'll tell you all you need to know to choose the right broker and not get scammed of your hard earned money. For now, let's just open MT4 and start with their default demo account. So open the app, it will automatically create a demo account for you. You will see where it is written start without registration. This will automatically create a demo account for you if you can't find start without registration and it takes you to a place where it is asking for you to select a broker. Just select MetaQuotes demo then fill in your details on the next page that will come out. The second method would also create a demo account for you. This demo account is what you will be using for now. Like I said earlier, demo account is free money that allows a trader to place order using the available amounts to trade on a trading platform without making a deposit. Note that profits made from demo can't be withdrawn because it's not real money. If you can't see the currency pairs, open your MT4 app, click on the quotes below pointed by the head arrow. It will automatically take you to the currency pairs page. It is almost the same interface for iPhone and Android users. If you are already logged in, you see where currency pairs are listed like shown in your screen. If you look at those currencies listed up there, you will observe they are listed in pairs that are joined together as I have told you earlier. You might be asking yourself what all these numbers you are seeing mean. This is why I will be breaking it down for you in a simplified manner so you understand everything. You must understand what a PIP is because a PIP is how the forex market moves. PIP is just like the footsteps of the currency pair. A PIP is the smallest amount of movement you can see in a currency pair that matters to us whenever we are placing orders. A PIP is how we make a profit or get stopped out depending on how our trade goes. Therefore, it is important to understand what this is. A PIP is the smallest number that moves in a currency pair that we care about as traders. There is one number below this called a fractional PIP or pipette that we will not be going to talk about because it does not matter to us as traders. We know that a PIP is the smallest number that moves in a currency pair, but how do we calculate PIP? If Euro USD moves from 1.14988 to 1.14998, that's 1.0001 USD rise in value is one PIP. What you need to understand is that the way you identify a PIP is the fourth place away from the decimal points. Most pairs go out to four decimal places, but there are some exceptions that like the Japanese yen pairs, they go out to two decimal places. For example, for Euro USD, it is 0 0.0001 and for the USD JPY, it is 0 0.01. If Euro USD moves from 1.24683 to 1.24693, that's 0.0001 USD rise in value is one PIP. What you need to understand is that the way you identify a PIP is the fourth place away from the decimal point. Most pairs go out to four decimal places, but there are some exceptions like the Japanese yen pairs. They go out to two decimal places. So for Euro USD, if it moves from 1.24683 to 1.24783, that's exactly 10 PIPs added. Let's see an example on JPY pair. If USD JPY moves from 1.9.500 to 1.9580, that's 0 0.8 USD rise in value is 8 pips. Remember what I told you, JPY pair goes to two decimal places. Let's look at another example. We have the Euro dollar at the value of 1.24683. But what if the Euro dollar drops to 1.24583? How much have we dropped? The euro dollars went down now, but by how much? If we went from 68 to 58, we dropped about 10 pips. Here is how I want you to look at this. If we practice a couple of times, it will be extremely easy. But you have to count backward the pips in terms of ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands. Moving on to another example, let's say that 1.2468 goes up to 1.2568. So if that's the case, how much have we gained? If your answer is 100 pips, you are correct. So that's the way you recognize a PIP. A PIP is the fourth decimal place, the smallest amount of currency moves that we care about as traders. But if you think, oh no, I don't like mass, so you can't calculate a long difference in PIPs, we have the PIPs calculator over the App Store and Play Store and even in your PC. So far, 
we know what the foreign exchange market is. We know about the currency pairs. We know what a pip is. But what is the actual value of that pip to you in your trading? Well, if you buy and the market moves up in pips, then how much are you going to make? If you buy and the market goes down in pips, you are going to lose money. But how do you calculate how much money that is? Well, for starters, the value of a pips depends highly on the amount of currency you are trading. What that means is the number of units you are trading. If you are trading units of currency, you want to look at the lot size in order to come up with the amount of value each pip is worth, depending on your trading lot size or the number of units you are trading. This unit is normally come in three major types, but we are going to do a fourth just in case. Lot size is basically the number of currency units you want to buy or sell. In the forex market, these currencies are not bought or sold singly or individually. They are bought and sold in packs called lot sizes. That is what makes the game appreciable. If not, your profits in Forex would have been $0.0001 or something like that. But because you buy these currencies in bulk through packs known as lot size, that is why the gain is appreciable. If you trade a standard lot, that means you are trading 100,000 units of a currency. So for trading 100,000 units of currency on any pair that ends in USD, then this is the exact value per pip. If you have one standard lot, you are trading a value of $10 per pip. So if you are trading a standard lot on the euro dollar, that means that every pip is $10. Every pip that it moves is $10. The second one is called a mini lot. A mini lot means you are controlling or holding 10,000 units of a certain currency. With this being the case, with 10,000 units of a currency, you have a value per pip of $1. So for every 10,000 units of a currency that you hold, there is a value of $1 per pip. That's exactly on dollar pairs, but that is very similar on other pairs as well. Let's talk about the micro lots. The micro lot means you are controlling 1,000 units of a certain currency, and that means you are losing or gaining 10 cents per pip. So every pip that the market moves is going to be 10 cents up or down your account if you are trading a micro lot. The last one that we are going to take a look at that we are not going to dive deep into is called a nano lot. A nano lot simply means that you are controlling 100 units of a currency and every movement of a pip is worth a penny. So to recap, standard lot means 100,000 units and is represented on MT4 by 1.00. Mini lots contains 10,000 units and is represented on MT4 by 0.10, while micro lots contains 1,000 units and is represented on MT4 by 0.01. I'll try to explain this concept of lot size using simple scenarios that you can relate to. That way, everyone would understand easily. Now, let's assume we have three traders, Dapu, Jeffrey, and Habi that deal in jeans. You know for them to make significant profits, they can't just buy single pairs of jeans from the wholesaler. They need to buy these jeans in bundles in order for the profit made to be appreciable. Those bundles are what we call lot sizes. Now, assuming Dapu buys 100,000 bundles of jeans, Jeffrey Benson buys 10,000 bundles of jeans, Habi just buys only 1,000 bundles of jeans, you would agree with me that Dapu would make more money than Jeffrey Benson, who will in turn make more money than Habi. And what determined how many bundles of jeans they bought is the capital they invested in the business. That is a typical illustration of lot sizes. So if three traders trade same currency pay and three of them all made $50 pip profit, let's say that Powell is traded one standard lot of the pair, while Jeffrey Benson traded one mini lot size of the pair, and Habi Forex traded one micro lot size of the pair. A pip of standard lot is $10. A pip of mini lot is $1, a pip of micro lot is $0.1. Double Woolies would make 50 times 10, which is $500. Jeffrey Benson would make 50 times 1, which is $50. Why Habi Forest would make 50 times 0, 01, which is $5. So you can calculate it even without the FX calculator. Even though they participated in the same trade and the market moved in their direction for the same number of pips, their profits were different because the lot size of the currency they bought was different. I believe this concept is now clear to you. If not, go back and rewatch this section. Let's talk about forex leverage, margin requirements, and why it's important to understand if you are going to size your trades properly. Leverage is the increased trading power that is available when using a margin account. Leverage allows you to trade positions larger than the amount of money in your trading account. Let me break it down. Leverage is the ability to use something small to control something bigger. In the case of Forex, it means using a small capital to control a larger lot size, 
with high leverage, you'll be able to open positions larger than what you have as your balance. Leverage essentially refers to percentage of funds that you are allowed to borrow from your broker, and it is usually stated in ratio like 50 to 1 or 200 to 1. But what this means is that in the case of 50 to 1, for every $1 you put up, your broker will essentially let you borrow 50 more. What this means to you as a trader is that when you are trading with a higher leverage, you are able to control a vastly larger funds than what you originally invested. That can be great if you have a trade going in your direction, one that you are making a profit from. But if you are on the wrong side of the trade, what it means is that you can lose a lot of money very quickly and in some cases, you can lose all of what you have invested and even more. To understand the concept of leverage, let's take a brief history of how Forex was initially traded. Initially in Forex, not just everyone was allowed to trade in the Forex market. Forex was only traded by people we call the cabals, men of Wall Street. They are usually investment banks, rich men, monarchs, big businessmen, company owners, etc. In Forex back then, common men like you and me wouldn't have benefited from this lucrative business. But now, during the invention of the internet, the world became a global village such that you can buy and sell from anywhere around the world under a broker and they have designed the leverage into our trading app. This led to the proliferation of Forex brokers. Now, Forex broker had so many customers around the world that they could solve the single problem of capital for us. Now, those World Bank ETC require a certain amount of money for someone to be able to trade with. But because Forex brokers has pulled many amounts of money together from different people, we are now allowed to trade through our brokers. So instead of an individual previously having to trade with $1 million, you can actually now place a trade with as little as $10 because you didn't go alone. You went to the market through your broker who is recognized by the World Bank as a formidable force because it has a large capital base. I believe this simple illustration is understood. If not, go back and watch the section again. Now, your broker allows you to trade because he offers you what they call leverage in the forex market. The principle of leverage is virtually multiplying your little capital so that you can use it to buy something worth a bigger value. So the higher your leverage, the higher you can use as little as your capital to open a high lot size. If you open a broker account with leverage of 1 is to 50 and you deposit $1,000, your maximum lot size won't exceed 0.5. If someone that deposits that same amount, which is $1,000, open an account with leverage of 1 is to 100, you will be allowed to use that same $1,000 to open a maximum lot size of 1. We have unlimited leverage. You can only get access to it on broker after you have traded a certain amount of lot size on their platform. Usually, if you have completed 10 standard lots on the platform, you have access to 1 is 2 unlimited. The margin requirement is the actual amount of money that your broker will require for you to put up to initiate a trade. You need to know three things before you can accurately calculate what the margin requirement will be for the trade. You need to know the leverage you are trading with. You need to know the actual price of the pair that you are trading at the moment that you take the trade and also need to know the size of the trade you are going to make. No matter what leverage you are using in your trading accounts, the margin requirement for one the margin requirement for one lot trade can vary significantly depending on what pair you are trading. You can calculate most of this with your FX calculator. You can see with the pair of JBP NZE for one lot at 200 leverage, the margin requirement is $559. But for the same trade of a lot at 200 to 1 leverage for the NZE USD, the margin requirement is only $353. And this is because of the difference in the total amount of funds that are being controlled by one lot trade in each of the two pairs. One lot represents 100,000 units of whatever the pair is. So the pair price times 100,000 determines how many dollars are being controlled by the one lot trade. Before you make any trade, you should always have a rough idea in your mind of approximately what the margin requirement is going to be for that trade. As you get more familiar with trading, it will become rather instinctive and you will just do, but initially you might want to do the math on every trade to find out what the margin requirement will be. Having a good understanding of leverage and more urgent requirements is important to your trading because it directly affects the number of trades that you can make and the size of trades that you should make if you are going to trade in a reasonably safe way. I know you have heard me mention a broker a couple of times in this video course. You might have had a slight understanding of what it is. Now let me explain it in full and also tell you some steps in choosing a good broker. Forex brokers are firms that give individuals access to trade the forex market 
by providing trading accounts. In other words, they act as intermediaries between traders and the markets. They give traders what is called leverage, like we discussed earlier, and provide other support functions to the traders. Simply put, Forex brokers are firms that give you access to the Forex market. Without the Forex broker, not every individual will have enough capital to go into the Forex market. Choosing a good Forex broker is a very big deal, especially if you are a newer trader just getting into the space. It is very important you select a good broker. Do not use a trading broker just because your favorite trading guru created it or they promoted it. The biggest decision you can make in your trading journey is the broker you use. Choose the wrong broker and you risk losing your hard-earned money. Choose the right broker and you will be able to trade in peace. There's a couple of different metrics and we are going to go through the 5 main points now. Point number 1 is regulation and security. You really need to make sure that if you are going to be working with a broker, that they are well regulated. And let me tell you why this is. Regulation ensures that what they are going to do with your money is going to be relatively secure. These brokers have been federally regulated and they are being monitored and controlled and watched by the government in your local area or depending on where the broker's business is set. In the US and the UK, we have very strict regulations on brokers where leverage is very limited. Sometimes people get frustrated with this because they want to get more leverage. But a US or a UK broker or one of those more heavily regulated brokers are really strict. First of all, having a lot of leverage can be a very risky thing, especially if you're a new trader. So it might not be the most important thing in the world. But there are, depending on where you are in the world, there are brokers such like in the Australia that are well regulated. They are good companies and they offer much more leverage so that it is an option for you if you really do need that extra leverage. You can check out brokers in Australia too. Regulation is very important because it's going to ensure that your money is safe. When you deposit $1,000 or $50,000, whatever you deposit into your trading account, there are brokers out there that are unregulated and sometimes in the past, there has been scenarios where people can't get their money back. Because these unregulated brokers are in a shady country or they are in a part of the world where there is less business regulations and those brokers are not regulated so they can't hold your money safely. As opposed to a regulated broker, it's going to be a much easier deposit and withdrawal process. Therefore, use a regulated broker and only use well-regulated brokers. Number two are easy deposit and withdrawals. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how well you do with your trading account if you can't withdraw the money. You want to have easy access to deposit and withdraw with your brokers and usually a well-regulated broker is going to have a very smooth process for this as opposed to some of the more unregulated brokers or more sketchy brokers that you probably want to avoid which are going to be very tougher to deposit and withdraw. Next one is the actual trading platforms these brokers provide. I personally love to trade on MetaTrader 4. There's a wide range of different opportunities or platforms that you can trade with, but you want to make sure that the platforms that are being offered by the broker that you are looking into are pretty competitive. I like MetaTrader 4, but there are other things I like to consider too, such as does this broker work on MetaTrader 4 or 5? Does it work on TradingView? There are different platforms that different brokers support, so you want to make sure that you have a pretty good technology as well as the tools are available on their website. Brokers should allow you to log into their website and get access to a wide range of free tools that they have put there for you to utilize. So check that out and make sure it's available for your choosing broker. Number 4 is their customer support. At the end of the day, you want to make sure that their customer support is pretty good. If you have a chance to personally phone call some of their customer support and you talk to someone, that is already a good sign. If they are friendly and helpful, that is a requirement for me. I need to know that the people I am going to be depositing my money with are very easy to contact, they are fast to respond and they are kind, friendly and helpful. So that is a very important component in choosing a good broker. Number 5 is transaction costs. Brokers have to make their money too. They are in the business of providing you liquidity so you can trade in the forex market. They make their money through two main sources usually, spreads and commissions. Spreads are essentially when you take a buy or sell trade in the market. Is that little spread or how you start out negative in the trade? Well, that's them taking a slight silver off the trade and taking some. They pocket a little bit of money as they are the one providing the liquidity. The other one is commissions. Commissions are going to essentially be a stretch charge or a percentage of your position. Whatever you are doing, different brokers have different structures for commissions, but they are going to take a slight fee whenever you take a new trade. When you are checking out a broker, check out some of the reviews online. 
take a look at what other people are saying as well as just go through their website and see what they are saying about their own spreads and their own commission. You want them to be competitive and you want to find good spread and commission offered by different brokers. There are various brokers in the forex market. Examples are Hot Forex, OctaFX, FXTM, Huaco Market, FX Pro, Avatrade, XM, IC Market, XNES, ETC. A lot of shady brokers I can't even mention here have DM'd me for partnership and collaboration, but I declined them. Unlike some of your so-called forex gurus who mostly just promotes anybody who gives them money. I personally recommend XNES because they are well known and well regulated. This video course is not sponsored by XNES. I'm just telling you what I use. There's a luxury boss exclusive link in the description to sign up to XNES. You can use their demo account instead of using the default demo on MT4. Let's dive into bid and ask price. Most people tend to have problems when talking about bid and ask. Well, I will explain in detail. Just pay attention. We have what we call spread. Spread is the difference between the bid and ask price. So what is bid and what is ask? The ask price is also known as the offer price. The bid represents demand and the ask represents supply of an asset. The term bid and ask refers to the best potential price that buyers and sellers in the marketplace are willing to transact at. The ask is the price at which the investor is willing to sell a security. A bid price is almost always lower than an ask price. Let me now break it down. Bid is what the buyer is willing to pay for something versus ask, which is what the seller is willing to get in order to sell it. The spread is the transaction cost. Price takers buy at the ask price and sell at the bid price. Market markers buy at the bid price and sell at the ask price. So now you can see you can't just say bid is buy and ask is sell, right? In forex trading, you are considered a price taker and your forex broker is considered a price marker, also known as a market marker. So as a price taker, which you are, you see the ask price as what you want to buy and the bid price as what you want to sell. Why the market marker? takes the ask price as what they are going to sell, they see the bid price as what they will buy. For you the price taker, the spread is the difference between the buy and sell price. If I click on a buy position now on Euro USD, the price that will be offered to me is 1.05594. The spread is the transaction cost. Initially, the current price isn't at 1.05594. But because of the spreads the broker wants to gain, that will be the price that will be offered to me. Let me use a scenario to explain. A simple analogy is to pretend that you are visiting a car dealer. You see a car you like and you inquire about the price. The car dealer asks for $20,000. Notice how the ask price, selling price of the car, is from the perspective of the car dealer. This means the car dealer is willing to sell you the car for $20,000. Now, let's say you are interested but you would like to trade in your current vehicle, a truck. The car dealer bids $5,000 for the truck. Notice how the bid price, buying price of the dealer is from the perspective of the car dealer. This means that the car dealer is willing to buy the truck from you for $5,000. If you think you can get a higher price for the truck, you are free to get bids from other people as well. Now, as the car seller, the bid is now your own selling price. Your forex broker is like the car dealer, so you can apply this same concept in forex trading. I hope this is clear enough to understand the bid and ask price. If you are using a broker that have a wide spread, you will find your trade running in huge loss before getting into profit. Let's talk about two important elements when placing trades, take profit and stop loss. Let's start with take profit. A take profit order automatically closes an open order when the price reaches a specified threshold. It is an order used by traders to automatically close their position once a certain profit has been made. Take profit orders are used to lock in profits. For example, if you are long, that is buying on USDJPY at 110.50 and you want to take your profit when the rate reaches 111.00. You will set this rate as your take profit level. If the price touches 111.00, the open position will be closed automatically, securing your profits. Why take profit is important, stop loss is more important. A stop loss is designed to limit an investor's potential loss on a trade. Managing and preserving your trading capital is your most important job as a trader. If you lose all your trading capital, there is no way you can make the amount lost back and you are out of the trading game. If you make pips, you have to be able to keep those pips and not give them back to the market. But let's face it, the market will always do what it wants to do and move the way it wants to move. Every day is a new challenge and almost anything from geopolitics, 
Surprise economic data releases to central bank policy rumors can turn currency pairs one way or another faster than you can snap your fingers. When you are placing a buy or sell position, your stop loss should be your number one priority. As a trader, protecting your account is your primary aim when going into a trade. Profit making is secondary. Assuming a stop loss order wasn't placed there and the buy entry moved against you, you would have wiped off your entire balance as you can see from the picture. Being in a losing position is inevitable, but we can control what we do when we are caught in that position. You can either cut your losses quickly or you can ride it in hopes of the market moving back in your favor. Of course, you can always ride loss with hope of getting back into profit, but that one time it doesn't turn your way could blow out your account and end your budding trading career in a flash. Using stop loss is essential to avoid further loss when it doesn't go as you have analyzed. The saying live to trade another day should be the motto of every trader on the newbie island because the longer you can survive, the more you can learn, gain an experience and increase your chances of success. Don't try to fight with the market. Having a predetermined point of exiting a losing trade not only provides the benefit of cutting losses so you may move on to new opportunities but it also eliminates the anxiety caused by being in a losing trade. In trading, always make the stop loss your primary tools whenever you set an entry to buy or sell. Stop loss is also known as SL and take profit is also known as TP. A trade order is an offer stroke instruction sent by you, the trader, using your broker's trading platform to open or close a trade. Basically, the term order refers to how you will enter or exit a trade. We have looked at the two major orders used in closing stroke exiting a trade after either buying or selling, which are the take profit TP and stop loss SL. Now, after doing your analysis and knowing if the currency's pair price will rise or fall, go up or go down, you will place a buy order if you know the pair's price will rise and a sell order if you know the price price would fall. There are basically three types of opening orders, buy stroke sell limit, buy stroke sell stop, instant market execution. Instant stroke market execution simply means that you are buying or selling at that instantaneous market price. Let's say a currency pair is currently at 1.05418 and you clicked on buy. What you did was instant stroke market execution because you bought at that current price. From what is showing on your screen, when you click on market execution, it will show all other forms of opening orders. MT4 keeps it at instant through market execution by default. So you should all open your MT4 or MT5 app and click on the pair Euro USD. After clicking on it, the chart will be displayed on your screen. Tap on the screen and the menu option will be displayed. Click on trade. After clicking the trade, the stop loss and take profit parameter will be there for you to set. So after clicking on Euro USD for the Android users, click on the plus icon above the screen. Then you get this in place to put your stop loss and take profit. I hope this is clear. So let's continue. The same thing applies for a sell position. If you analyze the market for a sell position, your stop loss will be set above the price level and the take profit will be at the low you are targeting. There are basically two main forms of trading in Forex. Fundamental analysis and technical analysis. There's another one but we'll get to that. Fundamental analysis is also known as news trading. Here you are analyzing the forex market in respect to the news. These releases are also referred as fundamental indicators and in a nutshell are designed to provide central banks, governments, investors and traders with a view of the economy. Let me explain better. This fundamental analysis covers every aspect of the economy from jobs to housing to unemployment, interest rates, exports, imports, consumer spending, manufacturing, commodities, and prices. In fact, anything and everything which can and will affect the economy. We can see all this news on Bloomberg, CNBC, and other news platforms. Also, we can see them on sites like forexfactory.com, dailyfx.com, etc., or apps like my FX book. I personally make use of the release from forexfactory.com. As a forex trader, whether a news is negative or positive doesn't affect your gain through profit because you make money both ways once you are buying or selling at the right time according to your analysis. Also, someone's profit doesn't make you lose. If we all place the same trade, we are going to make money from the trade. A win-win for everyone if you know what you are doing. Those into cryptocurrency trading in the early stages will tell you that they only make money when a coin is going up. Though recently, a few crypto exchanges are now improving and now allowing people to trade both ways. But in Forex, we make money both ways. If a currency pair is appreciating, 
we go long, that is buy on the pair. When a currency is depreciating, we go short, that is sell on the pair. Note, to go long means we buy when it's going up, while to go short means we sell when it's going down. Even though news are released every day, there's what we forex traders called NFP, non-farm payroll. Non-farm payroll is a news released by the United States of America. It's a compilation of data that contains changes in the number of US workers in all sectors, except for government employees, domestic workers, employees working in NGO organization that is non-profit and agricultural sector employees. Among all the news released by the United States, it is the biggest because it causes the most volatility, that is movement of price in the market. Non-farm payroll is the biggest news that every trader awaits on. Let's talk about what the news entails. It's the news that contains various data and statistics released by the US Bureau of Labor and Statistics. It is very influential as an indicator of US economy. Because the US Reserve, that is the central bank, makes monetary policy decisions based on this data. Hence, investors, financial analysts, forex traders, stock traders make trading decisions with the news. Note that NFP report is typically released on the first Friday of every month. Forex traders don't miss the NFP. Some traders trade once a month. They fund their accounts specially for NFP and close for the month. Most traders even make what you paid in a year just from a NFP trade. That's how massive NFP news are. It causes large volatility in the market. You can view news releases on Bloomberg, CNBC, and other news platforms. You can also view them on sites like forexfactory.com, which I personally use, dailyfx.com, or apps like my FX book. Each release is ranked in order of importance. A release with a red folder is expected to have the greatest impact. A release with an orange folder is expected to have a medium impact, while a release with a yellow folder is likely to have a low impact. So you can see the color of the folder once you are on fsfactory.com. You also see the date and time of the release. Let's move on to technical analysis. Technical analysis is a form of trading where you analyze the market using indicators, charts, patterns, candlesticks, Fibonacci, support and resistance, pivot points, Elliott wave, supply and demands, and other advanced concepts. I won't be going into each of them because if I did, this video will never end. But subscribing to my channel will make sure you understand all these concepts very well. When you use any of the above to analyze the market, it's called technical analysis. Technical traders generally ascribe to the belief that it's all in the charts. Technical analysts look for similar patterns that are formed in the past and will form trade ideas believing that price could possibly act the same way it did before. Technical analysis is not so much about prediction as it is about possibility. Technical analysis is the study of historical price action in order to identify patterns and determine possibilities of future direction of price. In the world of trading, when someone says technical analysis, the first thing that comes to mind is a chart. Technical analysts use charts because they are the easiest way to visualize historical data. Technical analysts live, eat, and breathe charts. High volatile news is not released every day, so you can't depend on just fundamental analysis alone. So as a forex trader, you must learn how to trade the market using technical analysis to know when to buy or sell. So because every day can't be bonanza, high volatile news like NFP isn't going to be released every day. So you must learn how to analyze the market and trade in the absence of any major news release. That's what makes you a complete forex trader and a luxury trader. Among the two major forms of analysis, neither is superior to the other and no one is used in isolation. There is also another type of market analysis called sentimental analysis. Sentimental analysis is used to gauge how other traders feel whether it's about the overall currency market or about a particular currency pair. Earlier, we said that price actions should theoretically reflect our available market information. Unfortunately for us forex traders, it isn't that simple. The forex markets do not simply reflect on all the information out there because traders will just act the same way. This is why sentimental analysis is important. Each trader has his or her own opinion of why the market is acting the way it does and whether to trade in the same direction as the market or go against it. The market basically represents what all traders, you, I, Dapo Willis, or Jeffrey Benson feel about the market. Each trader's thoughts, opinion, which are expressed to whatever position they take, help form the overall sentiment of the market, regardless of what information is out there. The problem is that as retail traders, no matter how strongly you feel about a certain trade, you can't move the forex market in your favor. Even if you truly believe that the dollar is going bullish or long or for a buy, 
but everyone else is selling or bearish or short on it, there's nothing you can do about it. As a trader, you have to take all this into consideration. You need to perform sentimental analysis. It is up to you to gauge how the market is feeling, whether it's bullish or bearish or risk on or risk off. Then you have to decide how you want to incorporate your perception of the market sentiment into your trading strategy. If you choose to simply ignore the market sentiment, that's your choice. Sentimental analysis is often used as a contrarian indicator. There are a couple of ideas why this is. One idea behind this is if everyone or almost everyone shares the same sentiment, then it's time to go hipster and trade against the popular sentiment. For example, if everyone and their mentors are bullish or long or buying Euro USD, then it might be time to go short or bearish or sell Euro USD. Another idea is that most retail forex traders unfortunately suck. Depending on where you find statistics, between 70 to 80% of retail traders lose money. So if you know that these unprofitable traders who are usually wrong are all currently long or bullish or buying Euro USD, it might be a good idea to do the opposite of what they do. Being able to gauge the market sentiment, aka market analysis, can be an important tool in your toolbox. Technical analysis is the study of currency price movements on the charts. Why fundamental analysis takes a look at how the country's economy is doing. Market sentiment analysis determines whether the market is bullish or bearish on the current or future fundamental outlook. These three work hand in hand to help you come up with good forex trade ideas. Fundamental factors shape sentiment while technical analysis help us visualize that sentiment and apply a framework to create our trade plans. In order to become a true luxury trader, you need to know how to effectively use these three types of market analysis. Hardcore traders in the technical analysis camp might scream. Fundamental analysis doesn't matter, it's just embedded in the price which you can see on the charts. Hardcore traders in the fundamental analysis might scream. Technical analysis is just a bunch of imaginary lies and drawings, it's useless. Why folks in the sentiment analysis camps are observing the two camps fight and monitoring their level of sentiment of each other? Fortunately, the different types of market analysis complement each other. Even hardcore technical traders may find useful fundamental nuggets that can help with their technical analysis and vice versa. In order to become a true luxury trader, you will need to know how to effectively use these three types of market analysis. When I first started trading, I made a ton of mistakes. Part of this was because I wasn't just trained. I didn't have the skills and experience at that point. There were a lot of mistakes and headers that I made that cost me a lot of money. So if you want to save money and if you want to avoid making the same mistake and you want to accelerate your learning curve and get to profitability faster, then make sure you pay attention to all of these trading mistakes you want to avoid so you can save yourself the time, the money and the headache. Number one, wanting to get rich fast. There are a lot of people who are asking if they can turn $10 into $1,000 in 20 days or turn a thousand to a million and why there are some great stories about that. Those are one in a million. A lot of people come to trading wanting to get rich fast, wanting to solve their financial anxieties and they want the market to do it for them. They want it to be easy but trade is not something that is meant to be easy. It's a skilled based endeavor. You are going to have to learn it. If you do that right, then when you get to the point, you won't think about or even care about how long it took, how much you spent because at the point, the money will be worth it. But don't try and shoot for getting rich fast. Also, watch out for commercial and all those fancy cars and stuff like that. You should bet that you are not going to be that person and it's much better to focus on building the right skills from day one. The top 1% of traders also know that subscribing to this channel will make sure they have the trading skills and tools that will skyrocket their trading journey and save them years. Number 2. Thinking that these strategies is all you need in trading A lot of people I hear all the time will say, all I need to know is when to buy, when to sell, and when do I hold and where do I not trade. Trading is a lot more complex than just the strategy, there is mindset, there is risk management and so on. There are a lot of people that actually have good strategies but their mindset is bad or not disciplined enough or they revenge trade or they don't stick to their trading plan or they see their setup and they can't pull the trigger or they have the fear of missing out. I'm sure you have these experiences and when you have these experiences you see how this causes you to lose money and make mistake. Then it will be clear to you that strategy is not just all you need and trading is more than just having the perfect strategy. There's a lot more going on to it. If trading was all about strategy and the people who got all the strategies in the world, they should be billionaires by now and they are not. There's a reason for that. Trading is a much more than just strategies and there's a lot more going on in this game. 
But don't worry, I'll still give you my trading soap secret strategy, but not in this video because it is already long and jam-packed with valuable information. Make sure you watch my video so you won't miss it. Number three, not being patient with your winning trades. This is something that I realize a lot of new traders tend to get stuck with. It could be for a lot of reasons. Maybe you don't have confidence in your skills. Maybe you haven't had enough wins to understand that. A lot of people, when they are in profitable trade and the market starts going against them, their negativity bias kicks in. What this simply means that our brains are wired to respond to threats reactively than to things that are moving in our favor. So if you are in a trade and you are up a hundred pips and it starts moving back a few pips, you are going to react more negatively to those 10 pips going against you than the 100 pips that you have gained. Even if you were to gain those 10 pips back, if it were to move another 10 pips back, that's going to be a stronger reaction than moving 10 pips back in your favor. That's how our brains work. That's how our nervous system work. And that's how untrained traders work. It's important to understand that if you still have conditions that are favorable to you, nothing's changed. You want to be more patient with your winning trades. I had many traders that I have been patient enough with them and just let them run their course and they would have hit their profits target time and time again. It is vital to be patient with your winning trades. Everyone wants the winning trade to just open and go straight to the targets, but that's not how the majority of them work. Another important lesson is to trade to make money, not to be right. There are several trades I remember very clearly that I was more focused on bringing rights that I was on making money and when they started to go against me, I was shocked and didn't see how to handle it back then because I didn't just have the experience back then to understand that what was going on and I was more focused about not taking the loss and being wrong than realizing this trade has totally changed. The context changed, the structures changed, the way I set it up is no longer the same. It is completely different now, but because I wasn't paying attention to that and because I was watching the charts and just looking at it from an analytical, non calm emotional perspective and more focused on me being right instead of maybe I'm wrong, I held on to the trade too long and lost a lot of money doing that many times. You are not here to be right, you are here to make money when you are trading. If your trades are showing off the bats that they are not working out the way you thought they would and they are looking completely off and they are not performing in any way whatsoever that you had planned out or thought or anticipated. You need to learn how to get out of those trades and not stay in losing trades. There are a lot of traders who stay in trades for too long because they don't want to take a loss or they are more focused on being right and not realizing they are wrong and they are not in the trade to be right or wrong but in the trade to make money. When you are wrong, you just want to get out as fast as possible and move on to the next one. There's going to be another trade. With that being said, these are the four trading mistakes that I remember very clearly when I started that and I wish I had known this because they would have saved me a lot of money and a lot of headaches and a lot of time. So I'm hoping that this does it for you, whether you are starting out or even if you have had some experience with this. I see a lot of traders who have been involved in the markets for a long period of time and they still make these mistakes. These are mistakes that a lot of people will make until they get their trading skills down, their discipline down, their mindset down, and they know how to trade. They know how to execute. They know what they need to do and what to do. And until you get to that point, these four trading mistakes are important lessons you need to learn to avoid making these mistakes that might cost you a lot of money. If you avoid this mistake and follow the juicy forex secrets that cost me thousands of dollars to learn, which I have reviewed for you for free in this video, you are on your way to becoming a profitable trader. Remember to never stop learning.